Welcome to the Southeast Retirement Planners Podcast, where we will go beyond the balance sheet with our guests, not only to share from our personal experience as financial advisors of over 25 plus years, but also to learn from our guests about the issues and topics that are important to them. Our firm specializes in taking care of the financial plans for individuals and small businesses by helping our clients identify their individual goals and taking a conservative and ongoing approach to helping accomplish them. We are located in Hickory, North Carolina, and look forward to continuing to serve our clients and our community. Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. We'd like to welcome everyone today to the Southeast Retirement Planners podcast. Uh, I'm Ryan Edwards, and I'm here with our guest, Coach Everett Sullivan uh, at Lenoreine University here in town, not too far away from our office. Uh, myself and Les and Bob in our office are, are all LR alums, and, and we are heavily involved, but uh, we're, we're excited to have Coach Sullivan today here with us. Uh, he's a good friend of mine, and, 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 and Les's and Bob's as well, and, and he's, he's not only – uh, made a name in the coaching circles, but also just a, a good overall citizen of the Hickory community. So we're we're pumped and excited. Thanks for being here today. Thanks, uh, Ryan. I'm honored to be here. Yeah. Uh, appreciate you inviting me yeah. and, and looking forward to it. Yeah, well, we um, I've got a little past in college basketball and, mm-hmm. and affiliated with Lenoreine and Appalachian State, back to Lenoreine and um, – Love my time in that and still mm-hmm. at a lower level involved with my boys and um, have tried to still stay involved as much as I can uh, at Lenore Ryan with, uh, with helping with the mm-hmm. basketball uh, uh, team, not the team, but uh, in terms of fundraising. Mm-hmm. But, uh, uh, but while, we, while we get started, I wanted to, you know, you've got a, a past that a, a lot of people, when they hear you speak, you always touch on. But mm-hmm. uh, uh, the reason I bring it up today just because – um, you're coming off a, a, a few big wins to start the season, but an exhibition game where you beat your alma mater. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, tell us how that was. You you played at Louisville yeah. back in okay. – Yeah, um, I was at Louisville uh, from 88 to 92, long time ago. But <laughs> it, um, it was a special uh, moment for me. And, and I'm from South Carolina originally. And, you know, I had a, I had the opportunity to play in a lot of different places. Um, I had a lot of scholarship offers. I could play at a lot of different, um, you know – conferences at that time, ACC, SEC. Um, Louisville was in the Metro, and um, I, I really chose Louisville because of the rich history in basketball. Um, mm-hmm. Coach Crum, Hall of Fame coach, won a national championship in 80 and 86, and I watched that 86 championship. I think it was in the 10th grade, and I just loved the way they play. And um, You know, I, I visited Florida State and Georgia and Clemson and South Carolina, my home schools, South Carolina. And, um, I just I – just, Love the the how they embraced basketball, yeah. um, horse racing, of course, too. But <laughs> but they they um they embraced basketball yeah. and um, during my tenure there or my time there, I, we went to three NCAA tournaments um, out of four years. Um, I, I had some incredible teams, incredible teammates, brothers that I still still my brothers to this day, and um, they've had a tough time probably over the last five to six seven years just mm-hmm. in terms of. You know, NCAA stuff, uh, some coaching changes and, and things of that nature. And um, when the new coach, Kenny Payne, was uh, accepted the job, it was ironic because when I was a um, freshman, Kenny was a senior. Okay. And um, so here's the tie. Here's the connection. So once I saw he was going to get the job, you know, I said, hey, I, want, I would be great for me to get back. I've never been in the Yum Center. I've played all of my games in Freedom Hall. I've never stepped center and, uh, foot in there. And that'd be great to bring the team back. It'd be like a little bit of a homecoming, a great storyline. Yeah. Two of Coach Crumb players playing against us. And, you know, uh, me being the first black head coach here at Lenore Ryan, he's the first right. black head coach at Louisville, at okay. University of Louisville. So it was a great – it was yeah. just – it all made sense. Um he took up, took me up on the opportunity, <laughs> and um, you know, I knew he was going to be pretty new in terms of his team. And mm-hmm. when we got there, we said, you know, we're going to have fun, but we're going to play to compete. We're going to compete. We're going right. to play to win. Yeah, we got the guys prepared. They were locked in. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't have two of my, you know, better players starters, so I didn't know what was going to happen. But we were going to play. And once the game started. I mean, they let us hang around. Um, we hit some shots. Our defense was stellar. We rebounded with some six, eight, six, nine guys and was able to hold our own on the glass. And they let us hang around. And, and, and it was a storyline and a, right. and a social media buzz after that win <laughs> that has continued on. And 
Yeah, you know, not only was it great for the team and the guys in terms of the way to start the season off, I think it was great for everyone, even Lenore Ryan. Like, the, mm-hmm. the you know, the people learned and, and started to get familiar with Lenore Ryan University because of that game. Right. It, it, it put them on an even bigger scale than what they yeah. were on the mm-hmm. national level. So we were excited about it, and mm-hmm. that's kind of how everything unfolded. It is. Yeah, and that's – you know, a while back, that's – it's when I, when I hear you say that uh, – you know, I know the role athletics has played in my life, and and I try to, you know, make sure my boys are a part of mm-hmm. uh, of athletics as well. But uh, I guess our, our former AD he, uh, Neil McGahey, mm-hmm. and I did not know what the man meant when he said it at first. I'm like, yeah. I, he uh, he may be losing it when yeah. he said it was the athletics is the front porch, and he went so far as to actually get a front porch yes. and make it in front of the gym. Yes, and then. <laughs> I finally heard him explain it and it made a lot of sense. And you guys have basically lived it is, you know, uh, while academics is the reason you have a university and everything, you know, that you don't go, you don't, the math department don't go on tour. They're not in a conference. They don't go take a test at Louisville. So the, the athletics is, is the front porch. That's the first thing many people see of a university or college is the athletics teams. Yeah, and no. that's where it made sense. And that right there, you guys have brought notoriety and uh, uh, people learn more about what's exactly. behind the doors at Lenorine when they see your team. No question. I agree 100%. Yeah. It, it is, um, you know, a lot of people, it, it kind of em- encompasses a lot of different things. And the athletic piece is one of the major things that – you want to experience when you go to university. We've all gone to, you know, you want to go to the football <laughs> games. You want to go to the basketball games. Even, you want to even an athlete, right? Exactly. Just, That's yeah, what I mean. Yeah, like yeah. you want to be a part of that. That kind mm-hmm. of gives it the, uh, the it, it closes every, brings everything together. Yeah. And um, they, the way you're represented, um, it could be on a smaller scale within the community, but it also depends on how, you know, how good you are, it could take you to the national level. Right. And that's kind of what it did. It, it put us on the national stage. It brought a lot of notoriety to the mm-hmm. university. It gave, like, gave our guys a great experience. And it's great to build on recruiting-wise. Right. Um, it just lets people know you're doing yeah. things at a high level. Exactly. you got a program, athletic department, and a university that can compete with anybody. Right, right. Well, let's, let's transition. I know that your days as a player, and, but <clears throat> you've been in coaching for a number of years. Yep. And, and – you know, right now, you know, I was just sitting back listening to it the other day. You know, you've got – it seems like a transition has been made in front with the media that they – they it used to be that coaches were talked in such a good light and, mm-hmm. and what they're doing. And now, more times than not, you're hearing the bad stuff. And I don't yeah. think it's yeah. – it's just that's what makes the news. But yeah. what – you know, and I don't mean – I'm not trying to be negative, Amy, but, you know, in this day and time you got social media, you got more things to worry about for your athletes that you oversee and that, that, that program. But what, what's today versus when you started coaching? What's it take to be a college coach today? The, the, you hit it on the head. The 21st century coach is different than, mm-hmm. you know, because of social media. Um, the number of platforms um, on, on a broad, broad scale, and even individually, you have your own platform. Right. It, it feels like everybody has an opportunity to voice an opinion, <laughs> they, you know, and, and that's good and that's bad. Like everybody has a right to say something, but sometimes it could get to the point where it could become a little bit overwhelming, mm-hmm. distracting. So I, I think coaching today is, is a couple things. First off, um, you have to be able to have a very resilient type mindset. Um, and hopefully you have the people around you are supporting you through the good and the mm-hmm. bad. Mm-hmm. Because the way the landscape is now with the transfer portal and the NIL, that the hardest part about uh, coaching is like continue to keep your roster and build chemistry and keep your guys moving yeah. in the same direction. It's so <laughs> hard. Like guys could walk in your office that's your best player and all of a sudden he's gone the next – you know, the next week or the next month. So right. that's that's two. I think the third thing is the kids are a little different in terms of, you know, how they embrace that, how they handle um, things that's getting said about them on social media. Um, what's mm-hmm. their resilient level? Do they have a contingency plan according to how they have success, how they handle success, or how they handle failure? Right. So the coaching part is really, um, you know, you're building players – uh, to developing them mentally and physically, 
And the mental part is just as important is maybe the physical part because if they're not mentally ready to perform with a lot of mm-hmm. distractions going on today's world from, you know, COVID to uh, political right. to parents at home to, you know, social problems. Right. It's a lot right. of distractions. And if you mm-hmm. can't get them to focus on being the best possible player or athlete that they can, it's hard to have success. So mm-hmm. it's, it's a little bit different. It's a lot more psychological mm-hmm. um, um, approach to it, making sure everybody's in a good frame of mind, a good mindset. And it's about a growth mindset. So you can't be, pro, uh, can't be result oriented. You got to be process oriented. Yeah. I mean, so much stuff comes to my mind or stuff you hear. You know, you're talking about recruit. You actually have to recruit your players while they're at school to keep them there. Yeah. Which used to be you just get them there. there they're, they're there for they four years. Yeah, you they, know, they did, the portal didn't exi- – the transfer portal didn't exist. Yeah, and before people don't know about the transfer, it basically allows players – and they're even thinking about – allowing you to transfer as many times as possible now. <laughs> so right now, you could transfer at least one time. It mm-hmm. used to be you had to go down a level right. to play right away or you had to sit out. Correct. Well, yeah. now you can transfer at, to any level and you don't have to sit out. Yeah. So that kind of, you know, it kind of changes the game for coaches yeah. because you're building. It's hard to um, get that continuity or that retention mm-hmm. that you need that people have – coaches have used mm-hmm. for years to be good. So the yeah. teams that have had those freshmen that are now seniors, they're, you know why they're good because they've been together, they understand the system, and they're able to just get better uh, according to the plan. Yeah. Now you got to do it in a short time period. It's a lot more difficult. Mm-hmm. I think that it would be – I know it would be such a challenge for me, and I wonder how it is for you because I know that the coaches we had going – coming up mm-hmm. – you know, many of these problems existed that we see today, mm. I think. Yes. You know, not maybe not – they're not magnified as much because of the media mm-hmm. attention they get. But how do you – and I don't have to do this. I don't do this anymore. But how do you – because I would assume that the way you were coached and like, like the coaches probably said, forget all that. You're here to play basketball. Yeah. Like, like yeah. I don't care what else is going yeah. on. Yeah. And now – I would assume you can't do that now. No, no. So, yeah, yeah. Because you, kid, no. don't think you're no. listening to him. Uh, like coaches didn't listen to nobody. No, no. They, they it just, used to be. A, <laughs> it used to be a. Um, um, I don't want to say dictatorship. Well, that, that, yeah, I think that's, it was a my way, in, yeah. my way mm-hmm. of the highway type of approach mm-hmm. to coaching. Uh, but from, you know, but the players knew that. Yeah, and, and accepted knew, it. And accepted it. And a lot of a lot of people will rebuttal you to say that's what they need nowadays. Well, like they need less of it. <laughs> they need less say so. But right. the, that's that's to my point. Mm-hmm. Kids are different. And, right. and they're different uh, because their parents are different, mm-hmm. and they get a lot more say so. They feel they want voices. You can't tell um, even your kids to do something without giving them an explanation. Yes, yes. Like you have to. You need I don't to, like it. Yeah, 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 I know. Um, so it, it's about finding the kids that you can coach mm-hmm. um, that's good for you and your right. personality, and then the coaches that are able to adjust mm-hmm. and to get kids to understand this is about you. Like, mm-hmm. what's the best thing for you? It's not about me. It's bigger than me. Yeah. It's about what's going to put you in a position to be successful um, on and off the floor. Well, you touched on that. And, I mean, that's what um, you – I mean, how have you personally – how have you conquered that? Like, well, what did you have to change? Well, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm like that. That's who I am. Yeah, like, that, I'm not changing. Yeah, yeah. I, you know me. I'm, right. I'm very – I'm a very genuine and authentic person. Yeah, you so, are. You are. And that's kind of who I am. So – I knew that, and I and I learned that as a player, that that's what I needed mm-hmm. as a coach. I needed someone like that. I didn't necessarily need a yeller or a screamer, mm-hmm. right, right? right? I needed right. somebody to so just. Is that Coach Crum? I mean, yes, it's... Coach Crum is very hand. They called his nickname was Cool Hand Luke. Yeah. And so, yeah. so, yeah. He, so he, he, had, he, yeah. he when he when he yelled or when he screamed, it meant something. Mm-hmm. For some people who do it all the time, they you know, there's two ways to coach. You can coach out of love. You can coach out of fear, right? Right, right? Mm-hmm. like so. It's two ways to coach, and maybe there's an in between. People who can go right. back and forth, but if you do something all the time, it's less effective. It's sometimes muted, so yes. it's mm-hmm. muted. So I, I, um, I use my screams and yeah. my and some of my tantrums when I have them um, at the right times. But I put more investment into the relationship mm-hmm. building to mm-hmm. get them to understand that hey, 
it's going to work out. Trust me. I've okay. done it. I, I've seen success. Mm-hmm. I know what it looks like. I know what good players and good teams mm-hmm. look like. And I I have to have you buy into mm-hmm. that because it has to be about the team. It cannot be mm-hmm. about you. And that's what's so hard with kids. It's that instant gratification. All right. They don't want mm-hmm. delayed gratification. They want it right now. I mm-hmm. want to play. I want to average 15 points as a freshman. And just because you did that in high school does not mean that you're owed that <laughs> right, <laughs> coming to college. Right. That has to be earned. Right. And you earn and you build that on a daily basis, and that's how mm-hmm. you become a good team and a good player. How do you continue to keep that? I'll give you an example. So I know it's not always easy, mm-hmm. I mean, by any means, because each day is different. Yes. You're having to deal with different things. You can think you're going to have a good practice and mm-hmm. they you know, have their head somewhere else. Yep. And – they're not focused. And at the end of the day, this is what I was trying to tell my, my boys, mm-hmm. you know, any time like they were they were really at every game earlier on before mm-hmm. they got so bu- busy. And then I was able to attend more yep. because, well, I wasn't as busy as I am now at night with their yep. stuff. Yep. But there was a transition when you came on, just mm-hmm. like with many coaches yep. like Hubert Davis at Carolina yep. or uh, Shire at Duke. Yes. And, and everybody's wondering – What's you know and questioning sometimes you know well why ain't they doing it this way exactly well why ain't they doing it that way exactly and you know so I mean this is a long way to explain it but I being having a coaching background I guess I I always said no you you got it's his program like it's Mm -hmm. I mean it's LR and it's a team but you know he's at the end of the day he's got to take you know he's responsible for the wins and losses and. And at his core, meaning you, Mm -hmm. I said, Coach Sullivan's got to make sure that – and this is what I'm telling my boys. He's got to make sure when he goes and lays his little girl down at night that he's doing it his way. Yes. He can't second guess. He's got to know in his heart. Yeah, it might be different, but it is a process. So, okay, so now here's my question. How do you get to that point? How do you keep yourself on track? It is – I think coaches do it two ways. You did it like who you work for Mm -hmm. for 15 years. If you work for a coach for 15 years, a lot of times you do it that way, like he did it. Right. So that's the that's your formula. Mm -hmm. You're gonna ride or die with that formula. Mm -hmm. The second way is you come up with your own. And sometimes with new coaches, like you know, this is my second time, third time being a, a head coach. Um, you develop your own formula right. and you move pieces around and you change things along the way. I've had to change things along the way. I'll tell you two of my toughest years here was doing COVID mm-hmm. not too long ago. Things It was very <laughs> difficult. It was probably one of the most challenging years for me to deal with with, with a group of guys um, that I've, been, I've had in my coaching uh, mm-hmm. career. Um, so I had to exuse, as you said, the number one thing was I had to make sure all my players were safe, all, they, all of them were healthy, all of them got home to their families. Mm-hmm. Basketball <laughs> at the end of the day yeah. was a small piece of the, of, of the pie. The big pie was when this season's over with, I got to get everybody back to mom and dad because mm-hmm. – if somebody got COVID and mom couldn't go see them or dad couldn't go see them and they, they I was the I was the in between. I'm the connect mm-hmm. and they want to know that they're getting all the best treatment and mm-hmm. keeping an eye on them. So that's what I led my head down. We didn't win like I needed to. Mm-hmm. And I had teams that were built to win those years, but mm-hmm. it was other distractions and things mm-hmm. that that was going on mm-hmm. that didn't allow me to 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 uh, for us mm-hmm. to perform at our best. So I have to know if it don't work out, <laughs> it falls you, on me, but I'm going to do it my way. way. I'm going to do, do it exactly. my way, and that's how I coach. Mm-hmm. And I think if you continue to do that and, and you stay the course and you get the right people on the bus, mm-hmm. and, I, and I think one of the things I always say, I think the key to success is surrounding yourself with good people. Yeah. And when I first stepped foot in Hickory, you were one of the people yeah. that I met along with a lot of other fr- mm-hmm. you know, people that are friends to this day yeah. have pointed me in the right direction, whether it was where to put my daughter in school or where to, you know, where I think I might <laughs> want to live or what's the best place to eat at. <laughs> you know, you, I, I, gotta lean, I have to lean yeah. on those people that are going to give you sound mm-hmm. advice and mm-hmm. keep it moving in, in a positive direction. Mm-hmm. Well, many of our podcasts have, have we've we've had people that are you know uh, either they're seeking out you know they they help leaders become better leaders mm-hmm. or they're they're certainly leaders in the community like yourself and in leading a, a group organization of people. So with that, you know, and you just mentioned it, you know, you're that's what qualities are you looking for in a player or a staff member? Yeah. When they when you're recruiting or. Yeah. Looking for a, a someone on your staff. Yeah, 
if if I had to, um, uh, to embellish uh, some core values, let's say core values for myself first and foremost, mm-hmm. it would be very much similar to the players I'm looking at. And I think that's the – is an acronym that we use in our program. It's the air that you bleed, uh, bleed, uh, breathe. Excuse right. me. So when I say air, it actually is our core values. It's accountability, it's integrity, and it's respect. Those are the three things that are going to encompass mm-hmm. what I look for, right? You got to right. be accountable for if you make them, everybody makes mistakes, own up to it. Let's be accountable right. for it and let's figure out how to move on. Integrity, like we're not, we're not doing things that are going to not represent the program, your family, yourself. Mm-hmm. It's not, we're not doing that in our program in respect. We're going to treat others the way you would like to be treated, uh, regardless of race, uh, you know, Just, demographics. Mm-hmm. You know, nothing. We're going to treat them with a certain type of respect. Right. And then the last thing would be serve. Like, it's about serving mm-hmm. others. Like, what are you doing to help mm-hmm. someone else? Like, that's when I really believe you'll get your blessing. So right. it starts with those type of things, which in a, in, a, in a nutshell is kind of the character. I want high character mm-hmm. young men. Of course, you have to have talent to play in a very tough, you know, conference. But mm-hmm. every coach is looking for talent. But if you don't have that character piece, that talent will only take you so long, so far. Right. And, and it's so hard to mesh so many different type of characters and, and personalities and mm-hmm. egos because you have to have a little bit of an ego to be a good player, oh, yeah. right? But you got to be humble. You got to be hungry. There's a lot of different things that you, you have to have. But if I had to start with anything, it'd be you got to be an accountable person, mm-hmm. have to have high integrity, and you have to have respect. Yeah. And I'm watching that when I go recruit you. I had a conversation with my oldest the other day that he he's he's – I can see it, and I'm just keeping my mouth shut, and he, <laughs> you know, because. But he was he was upset coming out of the game Friday night, mm-hmm. and I could tell. And I asked him, I said, "If you want to talk about it, yeah, we'll talk about." It. Well, I knew what he was thinking, so I just didn't. I said, "You know, even in the business world, what I've seen is if you know, there's there's people that do things the wrong way. Mm-hmm. I'm not just talking about in my yep. business, but there, you, you can see they don't have that accountability. They don't have integrity. Yeah." And they're not showing respect. Exactly. Well, if you got people like that on your team, it makes it real hard for there to be a team. Exactly. And, there is and, no and, team. Yeah. So it's and and it's while a bunch of individuals. and while yeah. they're still, they may be on the team. Now they may not be on your team because you have the ability to make the roster. But there's there's some on his team. There's some things that need to happen. This is and what I'm learning. They're not meshing. They're no, not meshing. You're they're exactly not going right. to. And I told him to keep up, keep his head up, just like mm-hmm. we have in the business world. And I think that's where me and Les and 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 everybody on board at Southeast Retirement Planners, we've you can. I said, you know, the good guys. It may not work out in your time, as quick as you want it to, to. But one of these days, you're going to see, and you're going to be so far ahead of those individuals that don't have. What you were just talking about? No, you, you. I think you tell the most from players, from people. And you talk about leadership. Mm-hmm. You tell the most, and you can find out the most about them when it doesn't go right. Mm-hmm. When things do not go well, <laughs> as well, nine times out of ten, mm-hmm. you will see somebody show their true colors. Yeah, and I, I have learned, and I look for that. I look for it over and over again in players. I look for it in people I work with, people I work for. Of course, you give – like I've heard before, you give a kid um, a bottle when he's crying, he's happy. <laughs> you give – you know what I mean? You give you give a kid something, you know, when they're – they get happy all of a yeah, sudden. Yeah. But it's hard to please them when you don't give them what they want. Yeah, exactly. And And that's the sign of true leadership, I think, in my opinion, and, and um, maturity and all those things that you want because you can't assume everybody's not going to strike, you know, and everybody's not going to hit the lotto. Like, it's going to be times in your yeah. life where things are not going to go. You're not going to get the job you want. Mm-hmm. You're not – you're going to get, you know, maybe there's a layoff. Maybe there's – it's just the money's not coming in. Whether mm-hmm. you're selling things, you can't sell it at the rate. Whatever may control it. And you want to see how do you handle that. Do you point the fingers at others? Mm-hmm. Um, do you take the – you know, you you take it on the chin and say, hey, Alf, we're going to figure this thing out. We're yeah. in it together. Kind of how do you do it? And I've seen over the last probably five years, I've seen a lot, a lot of leaders who I don't yeah. I don't look at as leaders anymore. Exactly. Exactly. That's what, and I, I think if you know, 
I'm just amazed, and 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 I I I think it's so important to have uh, a group that you can be a part of mm-hmm. if you're out of out of college, if you know that you can attach yourself to that, or a group of friends that can hold you accountable mm-hmm. and have that integrity. I, I was talking to a buddy of mine, and we got tore up the other day mm-hmm. because we had worked to get a kid that we had a contact at a college uh, to. Uh, you know, it was just an unofficial visit. It was mm-hmm. just maybe a walk on type of deal. Yep. And, and we had worked hard on it. I'd worked behind the scenes and the other guy kind of took the lead and, and he, uh, he was wanting me to make the connections. It happened. The kid got called, got a visit and everything. And, you know, something so big as that, um, his, his dad, they kind of, you know, there was a separated family, mm-hmm. but his dad, just showed up real quick and put it on the other guy wow. to do it. And I'm thinking to myself, these, in this day and time, how important, and, and I'm, I'm trying to make my point about leadership. It's just, are you there? Are you there just for the good times? Are you there for the bad times and the good times? Yeah. And I think it's so, uh, I, I, what I see with, Kids these days, they they've got so much in front of them, and they're not get there's not there not as many good examples. No, no, it is hard, and, and, and because what happens, what you you have to start, and, and kids don't know that you start looking at the history. And if you've been to four or five different schools, you played on four or five different teams, mm-hmm. you travel three or four. I'm looking at how do you handle success? Why are you why are you moving around so mm-hmm. much? Yeah. Why is it? Is things not going the way you mm-hmm. want it? What's the first thing you're gonna do? So if you come play for me, <laughs> yeah, and you don't, and you don't, don't play, like <laughs> and you don't play in the first five minutes, yeah. like or the first year, like mm-hmm. you, you know, you're probably not gonna hang around very long. Mm-hmm. So I do homework. I go all the way down the line. I'm looking mm-hmm. at parents. I'm looking at. I'm going to the to the school systems. I'm doing my homework yeah. because um, those scholarships. You know, and you know how much it costs oh. to go to school. They're like golden nuggets. Exactly. And I'm not giving my golden nuggets to anybody. Mm-hmm. I need to know that you're the type of person, the type of player that I want in, part, in, in this mm-hmm. program. And if you stick with us and stick with our staff, we're going to stick with you. And we're going right. to give you everything right. we have. And I think that the best leaders are the ones that are able mm-hmm. to get the – their young, their young players to to not only identify with certain traits that they have to have mm-hmm. because it's going to make you better in life, not yeah. just in sports, because things aren't going to go as you expected. Yeah, well, I mean, okay, so you mentioned staff, and I, you've mentioned it several times, but like we're we're in the middle of bringing somebody on new to mm-hmm. our office, okay. and that you know just there's certain roles and responsibilities, but we're also talking about how someone meshes together, but. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's so valuable because I love, you know, not only a good friend, but good business partner. Less, I will, you know, me and him have a lot of conversations mm-hmm. during the day and he'll bring up things I hadn't thought of mm-hmm. or vice versa. A lot of times I call him the wet blanket. I'll have all these ideas and he squashes them. You know, I mean, like he'll just put the fire out, you know, and he, but I appreciate that yes, too. It frustrates me some. So on your staff, and you've told me, I've not been on your staff, but you've brought up like just with our life experiences. Yes. You know, I, I don't. You've brought up a couple of things in the past that I hadn't, I hadn't thought of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, how important is that staff and having not? I'm not diversity in thought. I'm not talking about yeah. diversity in race necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking yeah. about in thought. How yeah. important is that? You have to um, small college sports, small college athletics. You're not going to get all the resources, all the things that you need in order to build the staff. So. Mm-hmm. You kind of got to be a jack of a lot of different trades, and you got to figure out um, as a, as a leader, as a head coach. The number one thing is I want to hire people that can help me in the areas I'm not strong. Mm-hmm. Right, so mm-hmm. that's the number one mm-hmm. thing. That's leadership in itself to yeah. realize, like a lot of guys going, "Oh, I can do it all." <laughs> I can do it all. Well, you just became a head coach, and this is your first job. How in the world can you do it all? That makes yeah. no sense. But, to, you know, that's an ego. That's a pride thing. That's mm-hmm. a, So you have to identify, right, self-evaluate and identify mm-hmm. where your weaknesses are, right? right You're going to be around somebody all the time, and this is what you have to choose. Do you want the the skill set over the ability to, like, get along? And actually like mm-hmm. each other. Mm-hmm. Some people don't care whether they get along or not. Right. Mm-hmm. They just got a job for you to do. They don't care about your personality. Yeah. Do your job. I'm not like yeah, that. I can't, do, yeah. I can't be yeah, around I can't. someone mm-hmm. as much as we're around in our office. You've been in our office oh, yeah. before. 
Well, you're around that more than your actual family. I yes. Mean, you're, you're, <laughs> I mean, it is unbelievable. We're around each other all day long. Mm-hmm. And if I can't, if you don't know when to be quiet, <laughs> if you don't know when to get in or when to get out or mm-hmm. when to say something, it's going to be a long, yes. long year. And so I had to figure out personality-wise, like, you know, I just had to figure out certain things that were important to me. The basketball piece, I could teach you. I could right. teach you video. I could teach you. There were some things that I can't teach you. You have to have right. foundationally. But it was more personality, character, very much the same mm-hmm. things I spoke about in the core values mm-hmm. piece. And somebody that was committed to it couldn't be about you. It cannot be about you. Right. You can't have an ego. I don't care what you did, where you – I don't need to hear all your accolades, all the championships you won, mm-hmm. all the players that you recruited that were all Americans. I don't. We don't need to hear all that. How can you help us, you know, get to where we right. need to get to? So that's the number one thing for me, I think, um, in, in terms of where – uh, the hiring process for my staff mm-hmm. is. And the second thing is it's got to be collaborative. Mm-hmm. Like you can't, I have to trust you. I have yeah. to trust mm-hmm. you. There has to be a loyalty to you. If something's going on, like you can't hide it from me. Let's drop, let's, yeah, let's, let's address it, it right out, now. Yeah. And then let's, let's be able, and I've had some great staff. A um, couple of my, uh, my former coaches are now head coaches. A couple of them have ventured on to other areas, but I've had a great staff and it's hard. That's one of the hard things. I don't know if the coaching mm-hmm. profession um, you know, is as lucrative it, immediately as a lot of right. young people think that that is. Like yeah. you, you know, you, what what did you get when you first started? Well, like you don't get anything. You nothing, have to put that time nothing, in, and you got to build live, it. Yeah, got to yeah. build that equity. You do, and and I, I I I wonder too. I mean, you've got kids coming from such diverse backgrounds. Yes, I mean, like I I grew up in a rural area mm-hmm. with. Uh, very few minorities mm-hmm. in my high school. I mean, now my mom and dad yep. made sure I was exposed to yeah, which to great. different, which, you know, back then, even where I grew up, yep. probably wasn't diverse, yep. but it was more diverse it's than where I was what, at. Right, I understand. <laughs> and then through basketball and sports. Sports, uh, that's what sports does. That's, it's what it does. So, you know, but you, you, you've you brought up a couple things that I just haven't thought of because I haven't lived it. Yep. And I, I I appreciate that fact. I know that's some things that you yes. have to have on a staff as yes. well because you haven't experienced everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, I I just I'm, I'm amazed at how many things still today, and it's even more so than it used to be that you guys have to be a yeah, well, have knowledge about. <laughs> well, it's, it's an ever changing. It's an ever changing world. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And in this world, if you are only accustomed to being around working with people who look like you. And if you're put exposing your kids to only people who look like you're setting them up for failure, in yeah, my opinion, because it's not the real world. And I'll tell you the number one thing that helped me, like I'm from South Carolina, Simpsonville, small town, South Carolina. I went to University of Louisville. I got exposed. But when I went overseas and mm-hmm. played professionally for nine or ten years, I became the minority as an American in a lot of different countries. So when I see people who don't look like others, who don't, feel like they belong, may not speak the same language. I have an automatic attachment to them because I understand what they're going through. I know exactly what they're going through, language Mm -hmm. barriers, whatever the case may be. Um, So I'm very um, well-rounded. I've educated. I've Mm -hmm. been very uh, uh, intentional about educating myself in in a lot of those different areas. And I think I have to prepare my young men to to be able to Mm -hmm. uh, navigate um, any, any, all those areas. If I don't do that, then I'm not helping them. Right. I, I'm just, it's just right. about basketball right. and that's not who I am. So we talk about, um, you know, uh, social issues, whether it be mm-hmm. political, whether it be financial, whether it be entertainment, like decision makings, what's the right terminology. I think Lenore Ryan has done a great job of, of increasing uh, the opportunity and the resources for our students there mm-hmm. to gain more education mm-hmm. about, um, you know, uh, uh, diversity, equity, and quality. Mm-hmm. So that's important. I think we got to continue to do that because it's just, that's just how the world is going right. to be. It is changing mm-hmm. and, you know, everybody wants to make a lot of money, but are you going to be able to embrace yourself in a different climate where mm-hmm. it's going to be uncomfortable? You that's might right. have to have some uncomfortable uh, conversations. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's exactly right. Well, well, this has been a, a, a good time spent together. I, mm-hmm. I appreciate your time being here. We could we could keep talking. Yeah, and, yeah. and this is we we've this is probably the most serious time we've spent together. Yeah, it's been hard. <laughs> it's been hard to catch up with I each know, other. I know, like but uh, but we uh, 
it's it's always it, it is always good to catch up and we we appreciate everything you're doing at our alma mater and uh, uh we we appreciate uh, you know i think just being a good example i i always made the i always make the comment that if i can let my sons walk down the hallway and not have to explain to them over the dinner table what they heard yeah <laughs> that was out of then yep. i know that things are being done the right way and we've spent a number of years at Lenore Ryan and, and, and you've, you've been there when, when they've walked those halls and we've never had yep. an issue where, you know, a student, a basketball players said something out of line that they've yep. overheard in a public area. So I, or just, they've been carrying themselves the right way. And I think that's a tribute to you and your program. And, and I know that I, I like to talk about positive stuff instead of bad stuff over yep. the dinner no, table. <laughs> I, I understand that. I understand. But, thank you. But we appreciate uh, the time, and thank everyone for uh, uh, joining us today. Um, you can find our other podcasts online uh, at Spotify and Google Podcasts, uh, YouTube as well. We have a YouTube channel. Uh, so all these uh, video podcasts are there as well as on our website, seretirementplanners.com. And as we always say, if you, we haven't talked about one thing, finances or investment today, uh, and we think that that's important. We try to uh, always kind of change up our topics, but uh, uh, you can find out all those episodes as well on our website. And if you haven't, uh, you don't know about Southeast Retirement Planners, you can find out all about us on our website, our staff, the services we provide, and we offer a complimentary financial checkup, as we call it, for any individual that uh, we don't currently work with. So we'd love to, to get to know you and your situation and, and see if we could be of assistance. So thank you once again for joining us, and thank you, Coach Sullivan, for being here today. Thank and, you for uh, having me. We'll catch up soon. Thank you. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor, member of FINRA, SIPC. Southeast Retirement Planners is not affiliated with LPL Financial or registered as a broker-dealer or investment advisor.